Okay, as you leave the, um, is there a time crunch for anyone at the moment, or, uh... Nope, I'm just kind of working on this model, and... Which is looking very sexy, by the way. Okay. A sexy Escalista? Uh, sexier, actually. Calista looks like, like, kind of like a happy, cute little girl, more than, like, sexy. That was a sketch. That's all I know of. I can add it a little bit more later. She's an attractive young woman, uh, in her prime, I might, I might say. I mean, she don't have to be so harsh. We'll, we'll get your, uh, your sketch figured out here later, later like. This, do I now need to take like a, uh, a saving throw? <laughs> I have a medic I back. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have fire resistance to, you know, That's wipe off those burn. burns? <laughs> uh, uh, I do have possessed fire, yeah. Does it count for burns? Especially burns of this magnitude. Yeah. Um, okay, so as you're leaving the building, you, you, you turn the corner, and, and everything um, is fine. You uh, get a little bit away. <laughs> get a little bit away from the building. You guys are walking and uh, probably talking about, you know, what just happened. Uh, maybe discussing what... Uh, what you're going to do in the next uh, couple weeks. Uh, then um, a man uh, approaches you from the side and kind of steps quickly into your path. He says, excuse me. Oh, oh, God. God. oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't startle her. Whatever you do, don't startle her. Yep, Elder's blast through the face. <laughs> Just because you don't get to keep items from this one doesn't mean it doesn't count in the overall campaign setting. Oh, I don't know. Like, that cares. Clear that up. Just you, still, you still can't murder people. <laughs> it's all in the canon, like continuum. Well, thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> that being said, he says. Perhaps you would be interested, you would look like someone who would be interested in buying one of these items. And he opens his coat and oh. on a flourish shows you, um, something, uh, you know, a small box with jewels on it. But as he opens his hand, he puffs and a cloud of smoke go- or, and dust goes into your faces. And very, very suddenly you make a constitution check. <laughs> We should have let Lex, you should let Lex do the freaking Eldritch Prime last. Uh, I got a 17 well, I, total. I didn't notice I didn't stop him from doing it. I just said, remember that it actually matters. You're also really close to a police station, in yeah. theory. Um, right. 17. Okay. Constitution, that's a roll plus the Constitution one. That's four. <laughs> Damn it, Lex. Callista just crumples to the ground. Uh, Kenjo, you waver for a moment, your eyes getting very, very dizzy. The world is spinning around you, and you see the man put the box back in his, um, his cloak, dust off his hands, and then suddenly a bag or tarp is over your body, and you feel a pull. And everything goes dark, and you feel nothing more. Can I insult him from inside the bag? <laughs> Thank you for no, you're, you're dead. Thank you for playing. You no. um. <laughs> Seriously, I need a different uh, dice roller thing because. Hey, go pick up a d20 somewhere. I think you rolled a 20, didn't you? Yeah, once, but on average, it's below, it's lower than 12. Okay, go get a bar of soap and shave off the edges. I'll stick with my criticals. That's a critical fails. That sounds like uh, like a lot of work. All right, you um begin to come out of this day's waking, begin to come out of this day's, and. Uh, You're in a dark room. You recognize that it's dark, and you you can see shapes around you. That's, everything's still a little bit blurry. But you can see shapes around you. 
Um, you seem to be in a 30 by 30 room, unbound. Um, uh, each of you is by yourself. You're just in this, in this room by yourself. They're, 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 you're not together. Um, at the center of the floor, you see a, a small hole, uh, okay. maybe two inches across. At, on the floor, on the ceiling, you uh, see just what looks like solid stone. Okay. Is there like a door? Or I would like to make a perception check to get more details and see if there's anything sure. useful. Sure. So, right here we go. God damn it! <laughs> I will do similar. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a five. Yeah, I got a five too. <laughs> okay. Well, there is a door. It is a heavy metal door. Oh. Um, heavy metal. Yeah, I got some heavy metal for you. And it oh, is uh, on um. <laughs> One side of the room, and it doesn't appear. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any other um, features to the room. So you said we're unbound. You are unbound. Oh, that's nice. You're unbound, fully clothed, oh, in goodness. your armor. <laughs> that would have been a bad flashback. <laughs> so, do we still have our weapons? You do. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out. We're not I was the lost room. at the door. Are we? You're in a All different right. room, right? Yeah, you you do not see each other. All right. Well, I'm getting out. Eldritch blast at the door. All right. I'll take the other approach. I'll just calmly uh, walk up and try the door handle. Just a scene to the door. All <laughs> right. Well, let's go ahead and roll for me. Uh, okay. This is. Uh, uh, Help me out here. One dice. Spell attack. Yeah. And that's, uh, don't forget, this is my first spell attack ever. So I roll a dice 20. Technically it's not, but, um, <laughs> well, I guess technically it is, because you didn't roll to attack with that last one. Right. He just failed everything else. Uh, yes, uh, plus six for you, I think. So that's, uh, 15 plus. Plus six? Why plus six? Charisma and proficiency? Oh, if you d- if that stacks, then yes. That's uh, plus six, so that's 21. There's no there's no stacking, it's whatever you roll, plus two, plus four. Yeah, so... Okay, yeah. 21, 15. You, you, roll, you rolled a 15? Yes. Okay, so you rolled a 15, plus two... 17 plus 4, 21. Um, you squarely hit the door. Canto, roll perception. Okay. Lex, uh, you can roll damage. Okay. That's a, that's a whopping 7. Let's damage? See. Uh, 1 by 10 is uh, 7. 7 damage. I don't add that anything as far as I know yet, so... The beam shoots out of your hand and hits the door, shaking loose a lot of dust and denting it. Kanto, you hear a very muffled thud <laughs> from the right. Okay, that's cool. Uh, did I try the door? Okay, so you try the door. Um, it does not uh, open oh. at just oh, a pull. Cool. Okay, push. <laughs> or I'll put it. It does oh. not just open. <laughs> You're part, can't you just like lock pick it or anything? I'm, I'm just... Was it out of these tools? Did you decide yeah, see, on that? I was going to go that route and then we talked me out of it and went entertainer instead. Well... 
you must feel pretty stupid right now. <laughs> I, I, I guess. <laughs> I guess I'll just keep throwing Eldridge blast at the door. <laughs> I don't have much option. So yeah. I'll just. I guess I'll just take a nice, relaxed uh, seat back in my chair and just wait patiently. I'll, there is no have, chair. You were on the on the floor. No. I'll just pull out my loot then, and I'll just start playing. All right, uh, Callista, make me a wisdom or a perception check. Um, uh, that's uh, five. <laughs> you are aware of nothing. No Except for the in front of you, and the slight damage that you have done to it. I'll just blindly keep attacking the door. Our heroes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, we we make a great team. You and us. I know, right? Okay. You shoot another ray at the door, and you similar results. Uh, dented and scratched a little bit, but not, you know, because that's force damage, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, I'll go over to uh, the right wall while I'm playing and take a pause and just kind of do a couple, like a little, dit, 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 on the, like wrap my knuckles on it. I've got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shoot the wall, please. No, no, no. This, this is even, um, if I can't get through a door, I probably can't get through a solid wall. No, this is brilliant. There's a hole in the floor. Eldritch Blast through the hole in the floor. Okay. Um, as you shoot through the hole in the floor, you, uh, you hear a splash of water and water shoots back up through the hole. Um, and it's kind of stale, stagnant, rank water. And it splashes around the hole near you. Callista regrets her actions. Hmm. Why? Now you can escape. You just jump down in the hole. Um, uh, oh, if there's a hole in the middle of the floor, then Kanto will listen for someone to come in. And when he feels like they're getting close, or if someone tries to come in, he'll jump in the hole and like grab on the edge. The hole is about two inches wide. Oh. Oh, it's a little tiny hole. Yeah. Never mind. Um, Just. So after a few moments of regretting your decisions and whatnot, suddenly Callista's door clicks. I prepare another Eldritch Blast. Are you ready in action? Is that what you're saying? Yep. As soon as the door opens. Okay. The door suddenly descends, does not swing in or out, but goes down into the ground. I see. And there is a figure standing there. A fire roll <laughs> to attack. Awesome. Here we go. Nice. That's an eight. That I rolled. So that's twenty twenty four. I assume that hits. Yeah. <laughs> and then the damage is a 10. <laughs> okay. You just... There's a s- wet snapping sound as the kobold's head is ripped backwards <laughs> and the energy burns through its face. <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> and I charge, <laughs> and I charge out the door. <laughs> two buddies, the other two kobolds, rush at you. Oops. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh god. Okay. Ro- roll initiative. C- can't I use my deception to try and convince them? <laughs> that I On your turn, you can. That wasn't me. <laughs> 
All right. So, so I, okay, uh, Anto, I would like you to, um, Lex, while you're rolling initiative and kind of planning out what you're going to do versus two kobolds, um, Anto, give me a uh, perception check. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, that's a uh, six. <laughs> okay. You can tell that the wall is not metal, but that's about it. All right. That's for you knocking on the wall. All right. Um, Lex, what did you roll for? I rolled a 16. That's a uh, depth. That's, and then plus two initiative makes 18. So very, very close. The kobolds attack you first. Oh, boy. Uh, Squishy Warlock needs help. <laughs> Sorry? And... They both have daggers, and they attack you together, and therefore they get advantage. Oh, man. Uh, what is your armor class? Uh, 13. One of them hits you. The other does not. Um, let me take that out, because I might need to it. Um, the one that hits you deals four damage. Or piercing damage. All right. And remember, in D and D, unlike in GURPS, there's no penalty for losing health. Okay. Um, Etc. Cetera, et cetera. All right. All right. It is now your turn. These two kobolds are, you know, in front of you on either side. You know, engaged with you. If I cast a spell, they 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 get an opportunity attack, right? No, not anymore. Um, if you make a ranged attack while engaged, you have disadvantage. Uh, and if I cast if something on... The only I, opportunity attacks now are uh, for movement. And if I cast something on myself, do I still get disadvantage? No, because it is not a ranged attack. All right. And I'm going to cast Arms of Hadar. Okay. Which is on myself with a... Uh, which affects every creature within 10 feet of me. Do I have to roll something to cast it, or just... Uh, yeah, I'm going to need more stats for that, because I don't have this... I, I can get it, but I don't have it open in front of me. All right, so every creature uh, within 10 feet of me uh, must make a strength saving throw. If they fail, they take 2 die 6 necro damage, and on six, if they uh, make the saving throw, they only yes. take half no, uh, this is your one level two, or your one spell for the day. So, let's see how this goes. Uh, strength, uh, as you may know, is not a kobold's forte. Uh, which is funny, because forte means strength. Um, <laughs> Alright, so... What is your DC? My DC? Uh... What, what is the, what, you, your, your spell difficulty? What do you mean? My spell save? Uh, my spell attack? Yes, your spell, no, your spell save. Because that's what it's using, right? It's strength test versus your spell save. All right, that's 14. Okay. So one kobold succeeds and will take half damage. The other kobold is hit. Right. So I roll two die six. I roll two die six, right? Yes. Two die six. Roll. If, that, if that's the damage of the spell, then yes. All right, so I rolled an eight. Okay. Uh, together. So one takes eight damage and the other takes four. All right. The uh, the full damage one uh, reels back from the attack and is killed. The other one looks really bad off but is still alive. Yeah. I'm, I'm already at two kills. And a barrel. And a barrel. The um, remaining kobold is going to try to... That's not a kobold. Okay. Um, I turned the page and uh, to see if there were more kobold things. And the next page is the kraken, which is like the second toughest creature in the book. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't mix those up, please. Oh, so the way, so just so you know, for future reference, the way that challenge ratings work in this edition 
is um, each creature has a challenge rating uh, that is equal to their level, or the, sorry, the level that four party members should be to face off, quote unquote, evenly with that creature. All right. So like the average thing that would be like uh, could be a player character. So like if you're fighting just like an elf, like a normal elf, um, his challenge rating would be one fourth because four elves would equal a four man party. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. Things like kobolds are less. And then other things, you know, have a challenge rating of one and, it, you know, they're designed to face you solo with uh, a four man group. And then, you know, obviously that goes all the way up to 30 for the Turosk. <clears throat> right. Uh, okay, the kobold will try to jab his dagger in you. He rolls a 16. Okay. So uh, you take another 4 damage. All right. My turn again? Yes. Okay. Um... So I see here on my thing that uh, a dagger is dice for plus two for me. Is that plus two? That's for my dexterity, right? Does that mean that it's dice for plus dexterity damage? It's a finesse weapon. So you add your dexterity to both the to hit and the damage. So it's die, f- die for plus two for damage. And for you should be a, what's your, your dexterity is a 14? Yes. So your to hit is a, f- a plus four. All right. So plus four to hit, and then d4 plus two damage. Th- all right. Well, I guess I'll stab him with a dagger then. All right. So um, another dice 20 then, I guess. I roll a 16 plus four then is uh, 20. You obliterate him. Well, I only had one health. You only oh. had one health left. You can roll. You can roll damage if you want to, but well, no, I, I, that's not necessary. Yeah. I did not look at that, but kobolds only have five health. Sweet. They're also they're also only a challenge rating of one eight or one eighth. So uh, you're supposed to have eight against a party of four. So Sweet. Three versus you know one mage with big spell. All right. Um, your door. Is still sunk in the ground, and there are three kobold bodies. I check the bodies to see if there okay. is like uh, keys or anything. Give me an investigation. What? I'm still just playing a song. Yeah, by myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it is, enough time has gone by. You know, six seconds or whatever. If you want to take another action, Canto, but uh, let's give me an investigate roll. Okay, that's. Dice 20 again? Every time, yeah. Alright, so that is... Uh, that's not good enough. That's... Uh, no, no. It's 4 plus 1. It's a 5? Yeah. It's good enough. Oh. Um, a very easy skill check is a 5. Oh. Oh, nice. Woo-hoo. Um. So, well, I mean, obviously the higher you roll, the more you notice. It's good enough to notice something. So, um, you see that each of the kobolds has a small band around its ankle, a metal band with a, uh, a loop in it, an empty loop, almost as if they had been chained somewhere at some point. Not regretting my action. Um, well, I'll, I'll go check outside of the door to see if there's some way to open doors. Okay, are you... How are you proceeding? Stealthily, careful. Walked out, etc. You yeah. should, you're like, in general, you're gonna want to like kind of give me a okay. I stealthily approach the door, or I'm going to be ready to eldritch blast anyone in the face. The other thing is, how much health do you have? Uh, two. <laughs> okay, so you can take a short rest, which takes an hour in this version instead of five minutes as it did in fourth. But um, that allows you to spend one hit die, and you'll see that kind of under hit points yeah. um, on your character sheet. You can spend one of those to heal yourself, but it's over the course of that hour. Um, I 
think it's immediate, like after battle, but you like it's part of a short rest. If you take a short rest, you would also get your spells back. Oh. Your spell. Well, spell. I but guess, again, it's an hour inside your cell. Yeah, I, I don't think that's wise. I think if I s- spend an hour here, someone will notice. I'll stealthily exit the the cell. Okay, roll stealth for me. All right. That's uh, 14 plus 2 is 16. Okay. You uh, very stealthily approach the door and look out, and you see what appears excuse me, to be smooth walls um, in a hallway that goes about 20 feet to your left and 20 feet to your right. How do they open these doors? I, I guess I'll, ch- I'll check uh, the, the corpse of uh, the first guy I shot. Uh, similar, I mean, just dagger, you know, hobo daggers and uh, um, blah, 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 and the little chain anklet thing on them. All right. I guess I'll uh, go check the other doors on my left and on my right. You don't see any doors. It's a smooth hallway. Um, what shall I do? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. I'm just, I'm just playing music. As you look to the right, um, roll perception. Uh, 16. 16? Okay. You hear a slight, um, kind of rumbly grady sound like a grating of metal on metal. And um, as you turn back around, uh, you see um, iron bars um, come out of the wall from uh, what must have been a hidden panel, and they close off the hallway um, in that direction. All right. I guess I'll go the other way, stealthily, and... Keeping an eye or ear out for any signs of okay. my uh, companion. You reach the end of that hallway, uh, and it's you just come to just the end of the hallway. It's completely smooth on the walls. Um, Kanto, back to you. Yeah. Uh, you hear a click at the door, okay. and um, I guess I always start to stand up because you were probably on the lounge and playing a, a sad song. Oh, yeah. Um, so you hear a click, and then um, a little bit of dust um, settles off the door, and okay. it uh, descends very rapidly into the ground. All right. I just like stand up and keep playing. I'm like, hello. Uh, Lex, you can now hear music from back the other way in the hallway. Oh. Turn around and towards the music. I'll poke my head out. Uh, Lex, you see the head of your friend. <laughs> Eldritch Blast. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they turn him into a Demi Lich. <laughs> All right. I'll uh, wave. Hello. So nice of you to join me. Oh, yeah, dude. What's, what's, what have you been up to? Oh, you know, being the hero, killing kobolds. I hardly call that being a hero. Uh, what are I <laughs> happy, buddy? Kobolds are a lawful evil. See, hero. Oh. Well, they're they're not like neutral creatures. They are they are evil. That's what have you been doing? <laughs> and they're only lawful because they follow the order of draconic society. Uh, practicing. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hope I've done the hard part. No. You, mister, I'm so great. I can figure out how we get out of here. All right. Can I then you see notice oh. you are on opposite sides of the bars. Wait, oh, what, what? What bars? There are bars in the hallway. Oh. That you would know if you were listening to the part I was talking to Lex about. Instead of modeling. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, you know, there's like, uh, you know, horizontal iron bars that have gone from one wall to the other to close it off. Uh, um, can I slip through it? No, they are, uh, they are too tight. Alright. Um, well, there's no gate, it's just bars. No, it's, yeah, it's just bars. Alright. I'll take it, a look around. It did, it did slide from, it would be your left and Lex's right. They did slide through the wall from there. Um, so I mean, you could like shake them or, you know, try to push them back, I guess, but there. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? There. I'll, I'll give him a good, good, uh, good tug. Roll, um, uh, an athletics check, I guess. Alright. Uh, this is not gonna be enough. It is a, I mean, acrobatics. I did not. Oh, yeah, that's just a seven then. <laughs> okay. For a brief second, they kind of give a little bit to the edge and then slam back. Oh. Oh, hell oh. Yeah, there we go. Wait, which side do we want to be on? Your side or my side? Uh, well, I don't think there was anything back here, so. so your side, I guess. Sounds good. So we'll try to, like, slide it, and if we can, like, have Lex slip through real quick. <laughs> Close it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it failed. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> okay, so you're going to roll a, uh, you're each going to roll an athletics check with Kanto being the main, so, um, you, you would get a, I get a bonus if Callista exceeds, succeeds. I don't remember if it's a bonus or if it's advantage. I'm going to give you advantage, but... Okay. Alright, so, athletics, right? Yeah. I rolled a six. Oh, gosh. She does not help. Her I rolled hands a six. can't find it. I rolled a 16. This time, the gate does not move at all. Oh, gosh. Uh... Can't you just... Right. Roll perception, both of you. Okay. Eleven. Eight. All right. That you hear a slut, a flapping sound, the sound of like a uh, a tarp fall, you know, like or a flag flapping. And Callista, you lean past Kanto to look behind him, and literally the far end, the wall on the far end, is billowing down, flapping down onto the ground. Um. Revealing a what? It's an illusion. <laughs> oh, well, you know, a man-made one, not not a magic one. Good night. And um, at that end, there is a uh, what appears to be some sort of constructed object with a series of holes on it. Holes, eh? Well, all yours. Yeah. Holes, tubes, whatever you want. All right. I'll uh, nod and head over to it and check it out. When you reach about halfway to it... Oh, no. Pass it, bit. You hear a... Or a... A snip, snip sound as each of the tubes suddenly projects out with a very sharp javelin tip. Oh, gosh. This is going to cover. <laughs> okay. I have an AC of 14. That's, oh, that, that's they fair. Like that. um, they, uh, it's just a wall where those start to come out. Oh. All right. Can and I do then, a perception uh, on the, the tiles of the ground? Yes. Okay. <sighs> five. Oh, yeah, five. There does not seem to be anything on the ground of, of note. Uh, and then the you hear what almost sounds like a slight grunt or groan as the javelin wall begins to move towards you. <laughs> oh, God. Slowly, but steadily. Uh, um, okay, then. So, oh, like the whole wall just turned into a big thing of spikes? It's like, you know, if you were just in a, a hallway where the, the, the thin end, the, or the thin edge, the hallway's just now getting shorter because this, this spike wall is coming at you. 
Okay, so that flappy part, where was that at? It was uh, a false like wallpaper on the wall covering this. this oh. Part. So it looked like just the rest of the wall. Okay. Okay then. Um. So all the holes were obviously the spikes. Uh, I guess I could just go back in my room. Just wait for it to As close. As you begin to walk away from the um the wall, your door closes again. Oh, it goes back up to the ceiling. Of course. And um. Uh, Callista's door also closes, <laughs> lifting the kobold's body um, with it, and the kobold's body begins to slip away, but not in time to save its ar- uh, hand and arm from getting crunched up into and severed as the door goes up. Well, I'm still fine. I mean, the bar's in, my, in the way between me and the death trap, so oh I- I'm, I'm cool. Oh. And then are- you hear a, a sound like, <laughs> and... One of the javelins hurdles out. Oh no. This is bad. Missing Kanto. And missing Callista. And it spears in, or it clatters across the ground on, uh, the, near the far, the far wall. Okay. Well. You try uh, to on either see. side of the, what? No, go ahead. On either side of the iron bars, um, Two doors swing open. Well, uh, I guess I don't really have a choice, so... <laughs> this is to your right and your left, respectively. Uh, which one is... Which one are you going through, Lex? Well... She can only, she can only go to the one on her right. You oh, can I only go to the one on your left. Well, I got no choice, so... You're, you're, fa- you're facing each other. So. Pull out the crossbow, have it up and ready, and jump through. I'll stealthily make my way through. Okay. As you proceed, um, you enter a, uh, each of you enters a room that is, um, about 10 feet to the, uh, wall on your left and your right. Um, well, Lex is right, Kanto is left. The wall that would be between you, uh, is just pretty much right there at your door. Meaning there's probably a little bit of, um, extra space inside that. Um, the room appears to be 30 feet deep, with another blank wall on the other side. Okay. So it's just another blank room? Basically. I start tapping the wall to see if there's... The wall on your left or on your right? Um, which... On my right. Okay. So you walk over to the wall over there, and you tap on it. And this one... um gives off a feeling or a sound of, like, wood. Awesome. I step back, and I Elrich blast <laughs> the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one come. Okay, um... It, uh... You burn a hole through the, um... through the wood, and splinters go out. And as you peek in, um... All you see is stone. Maybe, like, three inches beyond the wood. Oh. Well. Um. I oh, guess I'll check. Up. Yeah. Check the other wall. The other side on my left, I guess. I check the wall on my right, and so I'll check the wall on my left. Alright, the wall on your left appears to be, um. of metal construction. Um, and are, are you just like tapping it like. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, as you tap a couple times, it just you know, sounds like you're tapping on metal. Um, with prob- it's probably a hollow space uh, behind the wall. Um, but then as you tap a little bit more, um, suddenly you hear like a... <laughs> and then you hear a huge bang from the other side of the metal. That's not good. Well, hmm. well I guess that wall is not something I'm going to go through. So, uh, check the wall on the far end. <laughs> They're going to go through all walls. Um, as you approach the wall on the far end, um, you see that, uh, the profile of the wall on your left changes and, um, actually insets further. So, like, in theory, the space between the two of your rooms gets thinner. Awesome. 
I'll resp- no. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll swing my mace at it. Yeah. Okay, Kanto, where are you during all of this? Um, I'm walking uh, opposite of the side I know Lex is on. Just kind of walk over to that side of the room and take a look around. Okay. Um, you kind of notice the same thing generally. The wall on your left appears to be made out of wood. Um, if you tried it. Um, but it has the same, like, just kind of like beige tone that everything else has. So it looks completely solid. But it sounds like metal when you tap it. We'll let Lex do his thing and I'll see if anything, if I hear anything, anything like that. Lex, you take a mighty swing. Roll for it. Awesome. Uh, two. Plus my plus two attack bonus makes four. Um, <laughs> I missed the wall. <laughs> just glance off the wall a little bit. Um, not really a solid hit. You're pretty sure you could do better if you decided to try again. Yeah, I'll try again. Kanto, are you uh, now like investigating the far wall? Or are, you, are you making like your way to like what, what are you doing? Yeah, I'll just kind of like in step and knock along the wall all the way around the inside of the square, like. Uh, ding, 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 ding. Listen to see if there's anything that sounds different. Okay. The far wall from where you entered um, feels like uh, metal, um, very similar to uh, the walls of your 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 cell before. Okay. Let's go ahead and make another attack. I did. You know how you said it? I could do better. You didn't. I rolled a one. All right. You swing your mace and connect solidly with the wall, solidly enough, and the wall gives way completely, and you just fall through what appears to be just wallpaper in that spot. Oh. That was the most successful uh, one. Kanto, you are suddenly accosted by a white-sheeted ghost. <laughs> <laughs> shoot, shoot my crossbow. <laughs> um, I'll uh, take a step back coolly out of the way of the falling ghost. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that Kanto isn't so uh, trigger happy. <laughs> so you are now uh, in the same room together. Oh, well, that didn't get us anywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I cough a lot. <coughs> Hi. <laughs> Looking through the hole that uh, was made by Callista, you can see that um, it's just like part of the wall. It doesn't seem to be completed. The rest of it seems to be uh, some sort of light wood. So they're still building it? There's no what? So they're still in the process of building this place? Maybe. Maybe. Well, that means there may be more things like that. So, let's go around and see if I can uh, poke holes in the wall elsewhere. Just kind of like go along and stab my rapier through and see which one goes further. Um, you do not uh, really get anything out of poking any of the metal walls. Oh, well, there goes that idea. I figured there'd just be one of the areas with the open that we just keep ripping through. <laughs> um, kind of like that uh, most extreme elimination challenge where they just run at the wall and hope that that's the door that is made of paper instead of metal. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so you, uh, you're kind of looking around and um, figuring stuff out. And um, <sighs> Then you hear a slight uh, rumbling sound from the middle, uh, from that wall that was between the two, um, uh, the, the two of you, uh, Wait, until moments ago. From the wall that Lex just crashed through? Um, well, that was the wall where it got really thin, but before that, it was a thicker wall between the two of you. Okay. That makes sense. Enough. It's basically a wall that started out thick at the part where we entered those rooms, 
and then at the other side, and then it just thins out until there was just uh, that fake wall there. Well, I mean, it, it actually turns like a 90 degree angle in and then continues out. So it's like a cavity wall and then a single wall. So can we slip into, in between the walls? Is there like a space to slip into? You don't see a space, you just hear the rumbling at the moment. And as you both look at each other in confusion, apparently, um, we do. the uh, <laughs> the door opens, uh, or sorry, the the wall uh, opens, revealing a angry looking face with a big toothy maw, a uh, blah, 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 a bristly beard, and a fur covered body of a large. Bugbear. Oh, God, don't let it eat me. <laughs> Very good. All right. Um, this isn't good. And as he, when he sees you, he like yells in rage, and you, oh. just, you, you realize that that's probably the sound, or what made the sound on the other side of the wall, Lex. Um, and in his hand, he's got a big. Spiked mace, or big spiked oh. club. Okay. Oh, Protect me, Bard. Maybe this was important. <laughs> Protect me, Bard. You, you want me to protect you? <laughs> hey, I'm down to two hit points. <laughs> well, whose fault is that? What were you doing in close combat? <laughs> I'm in the cell. I was trying, at least I, I got myself out. I think it, maybe this would be a good time to stop arguing and roll for initiative. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. And then, so a bugbear is a challenge rating of one, just for the record. Oh, that's not good. Well, one to four, right? What? It's it's like uh, one of out of four. Like it's not meant yeah, for it a. Is <laughs> it is it is it is challenge rated as a party of four level one characters should fight one bugbear. Oh, oh god! Yeah, I uh, I just looked at his stats. I was like, I, I'm gonna have a bugbear who's the guy pushing in the fucking gate on the wall and whatnot. Um, but, uh, I didn't I didn't quite realize how strong they were. Um. Oh well. Our, <laughs> oh well, he says. <laughs> right, initiative then, I guess. I think Our, hobgoblins are even even tougher, so let's not do that. Uh, yeah, initiative indeed. 16 for Kanto. Uh, 19 for me. Callista goes first. Oh, God. Sweet. Um, let's see what options we have. Um, Thaumaturgy, Eldritch Blast, and I forget what you took as your third cantrip. Uh, chill Touch. All right. Well, I'll just Eldritch Blast. I think that's my best bet here. Yeah, I, can't, I can't remember what Chill Touch does. does. It's um, a one, debuff would not be terrible right now. Uh, sorry, a what? A debuff? Like, something to yeah. cause a lot of damage to the bugbear? This only does, Chill Touch only does 1 dice 8 necro, and it doesn't allow him to heal till next turn, and against yeah, undead right. they have. So Eldritch Blast yeah. is my best option. Yeah. Right, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I rolled a three. Nope. Yep. <laughs> Can't do it. All right, uh, I'm going to use Dissonant Whispers. And this is a first level enchantment. You whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of your choice within range can hear. Uh, racking them in terrible pain, they must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, it takes 3d6 psychic damage and must immediately use its reaction to move its full speed away from me. Um, the creature will not move into dangerous terrain. Um, on a successful save, it takes half damage and doesn't have to move. So it's guaranteed damage, which is good. Okay, so all I have to do is, uh, what do I roll? Or do I roll? Uh, if it's a wisdom saving throw? Yeah. Then you roll nothing. Good. What is your DC? 14, I believe. He passes, oh. amazingly enough. Actually, I have no idea what it is. Uh, 
your, your, I'm pretty sure your DC is 14. You say it was 10 plus 4 plus 2? It's 8 plus 4 plus 2. Oh. Then yeah, 14. So he takes half damage. Six, Damn it. Six, you gotta be, that's, that's, I just blew my wad right there. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I rolled a four, I rolled, he has a, a zero in wisdom and I rolled a 14. You gotta be shitting me. Which actually, oddly enough, they have 11 wisdom. Only 8 intelligence though. Damn it! And I rolled a freaking huge damage score too. God. Uh, 15 damage, so half of that. 7. Damn it. He takes 7 damage and roars. That, that would have been a beast of an attack. That sucks. Yeah. Um, and he, he, he charges you. Oh shit! That was that was that was it. Just, that was just, my skill. Just go thank him. All right, just yeah. thank him. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> what is your AC? Fourteen. He misses you with his oh. morning star. Which is good, because he does a lot of damage, and also is supposedly adds an extra melee weapon damage. Okay. I wonder if that's factored in. I don't know. I can't tell. It's gotta be. No. Two plus... Yeah, no, that's gotta be factored in. <laughs> okay. Never mind, then. Um... Alright, uh, back to Callista. Alright. We got oh, something oh. good. Well, I I already used my um, my level one spell, so the best thing I can do is just Eldritch blast him over and over again. Basically, yeah. Please hit. There we go. Oh, that's uh, I rolled a nineteen. Oh, nice. That hits. Awesome. Roll the uh, nineteen. Yep. So that's really good. One dice, ten, four. Okay. <laughs> makes me uh, I stop and I size him up and I say bugbear huh I guess your mama couldn't choose and that's vicious mockery and I, I don't know what that means <laughs> either does Canto you release a string of insults okay. laced with subtle enchantments at a creature you can see within range the target can hear you no, I, mean, I, just, I just don't know what the actual thing means <laughs> oh they're not like half of something yeah uh it must succeed on a wisdom throw or take 1d4 psychic damage and have disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the end of its next turn. There you go. So basically, I am tanking it, Lex. <laughs> well, yes. you're the best kind of, of. Uh, either of us at it, so I'll just continue to do 4 damage at him. <laughs> okay, so um, how much damage do you do? Just 1d4. Oh, wait, am I supposed to save against it? Yeah, it's wisdom. He does not. Yay! Oh, I Bugbear has a two. Let's see what I got here. <laughs> it's funny, I'm all like, should I, can I, what, how can I nerf this guy? <laughs> how can I make this better? But you, you might, you might be okay. As long as he doesn't get to Lex, and Lex is two HP. Uh, three damage, and it has disadvantage on his next attack. Alright, three damage? Okay. Uh, the bugbear will take a swing at you again. The bugbear misses with both. Oh, phew. So, we're good. I kind of... He's so like very, this, very angry. I suddenly lean back and look at like Lex and go, Please kill it. <laughs> I'm doing my best. You just keep doing what you've been doing so far. <laughs> That's, those are the only two times he can do what he just did. Oh. <laughs> Well, is this oh, a, I can, is I can this do like a one or a cantrip? It's a cantrip. I can do that over and over again. Oh. Is it a ranged attack? Uh, it is a 60 foot range attack, yep. Okay, um, because he was engaged with you, you would have been disadvantaged to roll that, just for the record. Oh, oh I wait, thought no. if it... He had to save out of it, right? Yeah. I wonder if he has advantage on that. I actually don't know. I'll have to look that up later. That any ranged attack, including spells that are ranged attacks, um, are supposed to give you disadvantage rather than a, giving an opportunity attack. Okay. Um, okay, so that's uh, Callista with an Eldritch Blast. Yep. 
I rolled an 18. An, an 80? That's, an, that's an impressive. 18. Yeah, you hit him. Awesome. And then for the damage, 5. Okay. He uh, definitely looks pretty beat up. All right. Can't do. Um, I'll take a look at him and I'll go. Oh, you know what smells worse than a dead bugbear? A live one! <laughs> this is mockery. Uh, he roars and uh, rolls a 19. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then he reaches back with his giant warhammer, uh, oh, no. uh, morning star, and uh, pretty well oblitz your armor class. Um, let's see, should I roll his damage or take his average? Just roll it. Uh, well, you're actually supposed to take the average, usually for low-level encounters. And actually, oh. they, um, they say the game gets much, e- like, is the hardest at level comparatively, uh, without, you know, DM dickery. Um, the game is hardest at level one, because you just don't have access to anything. So I'm going to use uh, the lesser of the two damages, because there's only two of you. So he does nine damage to you. Oh, God. Uh, this, the average is 11, because it's 2d8 oh, plus yeah, 2. Oh, that, that would have done me in. I have two Do you only have 11 points? Yeah. <laughs> so now we're both okay. at two. Please kill it. Terrible. I'll try. There we go. I really need good rolls. Come on, baby. Don't let me down. Six to hit. As, oh, as, as she misses <laughs> with her Eldritch Blast, you see, um, or you hear a uh, crashing sound as the, um, the javelin wall hits the iron bars. Okay. Out in the hallway. That's why um, I it distracted me. Yeah, that's it. Okay, are you going to vicious mockery? Oh, um, him. Can, what happens if I want to stab him with my rapier? Is uh. uh you're gonna want to roll really, really well. Oh, it's a high AC. I'm guessing. Um, what? I'm guessing that means he's I mean, a high. His AC is pretty decent, but because uh, he doesn't have a shield, so his AC is pretty still pretty decent. But um, I meant for damage. Well, actually, you add like plus three yeah, to your damage, don't you? One d eight plus three. Oh, uh, so you're actually bringing home pretty good damage on that. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to All right. I got a... Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, it's like a 17 to hit. That's it? Woo! All right. 1d8 plus 3. You want to roll high. Oh, come on, baby. Uh, what the hell is that dice for? I got a... Oh, shoot, I wrote. I got a 5 plus 3 is 8. You kill him. Oh. Ooh. Exactly. That's what I was saying. You just forgot about the whole adding your dexterity thing. So I was like, you need an 8 to kill him, you roll a d8. Yes. A bugbear is armor class 16. Oh, uh, except I made this one 14 because he didn't have a shield. Uh, 27 hit points. And then 2d8 plus 2 damage on um, the Morning Star. Jeez. Go team. He also has a javelin that does uh, 1d6 plus 2. Okay, so here, here, brute. Yeah, okay, so they definitely factored that in already. I was thinking he did 3d8 plus 2, which would have been insane. Yeah. He falls. I'll think it was. You just want to stay here and rest for a moment? <laughs> yes. Can't focus. <laughs> you okay there, buddy? <laughs> yeah. We'll uh, rest. Yes. If we can. Uh. I mean, as far as you know, you probably can. Yeah, we'll take a we'll take a quick breather. Uh, like an actual short rest. Yeah. Yeah. Which is an hour. Yeah, it works for me. No, <laughs> no offense, but we're both down to two, uh, two hit points, and we we blown our best stuff. Yeah, 
Hold on. I'm just I'm just reminding you that it's that it's an hour. It's not like you know five minutes or whatever yeah. might happen in an hour. How about we check the bugbear first? For goodies. All right. The, the bugbear is basically wearing a loincloth. Ugh. No, I'll let you check that. that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, roll perception for me. Okay. Uh, that's a thirteen. Uh, that's a sixteen. Okay. Uh, those are both enough. You uh, see within um, the little, like the wall section, it was pretty much just wide enough for him and a little bit of elbow room. And there's two, there's a, like a, a bar of metal um, with two large handles uh, pushed up against the uh, far wall. Bar of metal. So, like a door handle? Go push it? Uh, they look like large door handles, but they are attached to like a, a a vertical bar. Okay. No, I'm all for pushing it, but can we rest first? If you would like to rest, my dear, we can rest. Thank you. Always such a gentleman. <laughs> he says as he picks up the best spot on the floor and passes out. <laughs> <laughs> you manage to be able to rest. You can each spend one hit die. Okay. And uh, you, uh, Lex, you regain... Your spells, Kanto, I don't know if you do. I don't know. I got five points back, though. Alright, one dice uh, eight. Wow. I don't like this system. <laughs> okay. I'm up. You, uh, you can take the average if you want to. Which on a D8 is a uh, five. Alright. Oh, yeah, I'll take that over, over up to four, so yeah. <laughs> I think on some on stuff like that, at least today, especially, I'll probably let you guys always do that. Take the average or better. So I'm guessing it's going to be under spell casting. Um, okay, spell slots. Finishing a long rest restores all your um, things. Uh, I do not see anything for you but it says you get a spell back. I know that the sorcerer has ways and the wizard has ways. The wizard gets X amount back and then like another a roll to get more back. And uh, I actually never saw the thing that says the warlock gets them all back, but um, I read that somewhere, so I presumed it was true. So if you could quick Google that and find it, otherwise we will continue. Um, as yeah, if you had no level one. I don't see anything. So uh, Lex has his back. All right, what would you like to do? Uh, we'll go check out those bars, and I'll reach up and pull and push on them. Okay, as you pull on them, you notice a little bit of give. Oh. So I'll grab one and motion for uh, Lex to grab the other. All right, works for me. One, a two, a one, two, three, pull. There we go. Um, okay, so the bars pull out, and or, or so you, the handles pull out, and you notice that this one bar is uh, like the cat end of those iron bars that went across the hallway. So as you're pulling it, and you realize that that's why um, you, you had a little bit of give, but then nothing. It must have been the bugbear pushing and pulling on the uh, the iron bars. Oh, so he was stuck in there. Uh, yes, he was. He was the mechanism that drove those bars. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, so there's nothing else in the room. No, it's uh, it's like literally a four by eight foot deep. But um, tap wall. So yeah. I guess we, I mean, probably couldn't slide them either because it's uh, it's the there's the. Javelin wall is stuck to it now, isn't it? Well, as you slide them out, did you, if you slide them all the way, you, you notice this as you're sliding out. I presume that you just kind of... I, I told you that as you got them far enough that you realized what they were. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you slide. want to keep pulling, you can. I might as well open that area up in case we need to go back through or something. Well, if, if we open it up, wouldn't the javelin wall just keep going? Yeah. In theory. That's yeah, but would that free up the area behind it? That's what I was hoping. 
So let's do it. Let's pull it out if we can. If this doesn't work, I'm blaming you. Uh, well, it's not like we're losing anything by doing this. Check ass. Well, all right. Give me a strength check. Oh, great. Uh, 16. 12. All right. You fairly easily pull the bars, and then you hear a squeaking rumble as the um, uh, from the hallway beyond. I'll go check. Okay. I'll follow. <laughs> the uh, doorway is now closed because you the the stone javelin thing is in the way, uh, but it's moving past. And after a couple feet of you know solid object. Uh, you see a large pair of hands pushing. I ready my Elvis blast. Um, I duck behind cover. <laughs> uh, by uh, cover, I mean the sequence. Cool stuff. Uh, yeah. So, um, go ahead and uh, roll perception. Uh, sixteen. Fifteen. The hands appear to be carved out of stone. That seems redundant, but okay. And as it continues to push along, you see that it is actually a carving of, like, a burly dwarf just pushing, and it rolls past. Okay. And uh, it is actually on some sort of, you know, extended pulley system that is, uh, behind it you see a rope that is moving with it. Well, uh, slide through and jump, duck in behind it and go the opposite direction. You don't want to cut the rope? I kind of want to cut the rope, but I'm afraid it'll slingshot back to us. All right. Makes sense. Right. All right. So we'll leave the rope for now until we think we're safe and then we can cut it. All right. So you walk down the hallway and there is an opening. Um, and as you uh, walk through, it is no longer the beige color of um, the inside walls. Uh, now it looks like just kind of a quintessential warehouse type motif. You know, just um, metal structure, metal and wood and stone structure. Um, and as you kind of peek around the edge, you see that the um, this appears to be the hallways and whatnot appear to be some sort of structure within a building. So, like, we're in, like, a little death room. Death yeah. box. Hmm. Okay, this must be some insane person that thinks he's really clever and decided to catch us and see if we could uh, survive his little game. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's stealthily proceed. Yeah, I'll stop. Yeah. Okay, uh, roll stealth for me. Uh, oh boy. Let's see. 19, Six. 19 plus 5, so 24. Alright. So, Kanto begins going all ninja like, and Callista trips over her robes and <laughs> knocks against the wall. <laughs> nice work. Thank you. I'll be here all week. You might be wearing pants. I don't really know. Trip over something. You trip over the rope, I suppose. <laughs> um, Told you we should cut it. <laughs> and uh, you see that the rope is attached to a uh, small donkey. <laughs> and that is what's pulling. A donkey? Yes. All right, now I'll cut the rope. All right. I cut the rope. The... Donkey kind of looks back and looks around and then kind of stops moving and then goes back to eating the hay near it. I brick the donkey with my dagger. Just in its rear to get it moving. That's not very nice, dude. It, uh, I don't know if you can hear the sound of my dice when they roll. I do. Um, that'll be an added effect of fun when I get a microphone. Um... The donkey misses you as it kicks backwards. Whew. And then it it makes an agitated sound and kind of trots away. 
All right. Was that necessary? Um. Yes. Fair enough. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I need these spell components. Don't you understand? This is warlock stuff. You would get it. Maybe you can teach me later. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so we're just in a big giant room and just exited so, another room. Yeah, you uh, you see, that this is kind of like the lawn edge of the hard uh, the hallway or the, of the warehouse. So, like, it kind of spans off into the distance, and you see that this uh, quote unquote death room seems to be located pretty centrally in it. Um, it's also a fairly tall warehouse. There's a uh, like a balcony that goes around the top of it. Hmm. Um, Can I climb up on top of the death the death room? You can try. Yeah, acrobatics. Uh, athletics. Um, okay, I would like to ping pong off the walls until I reach the top. <laughs> can that be acrobatics? Um. um there's nothing really. I don't think that you could ping pong off of. It's a, pretty much a smooth wall. Alright. It's like a, it's literally oh, a box. I got a 19, anyways. I was say it's about 12 feet tall. All right, you're able to um kind of hop high enough that uh you know you can you can get a grip on one of the uh the struts that um you know is is there for structural support and uh. You can pull yourself up, kind of chin up over the edge. Right, so I kind of peek over, see if I see anything up there. It's mostly clear, except for what look like a few um, mechanical things, various devices at certain points. Okay. So the walkway above us, is it just like go all the way around? Yeah, it's just like a catwalk around the... Um, it has a few crisscrosses on it that go, you know go from one into the other. Is there like a, a foreman's office or anything? You like don't anything? see anything. Okay. Seems like a pretty empty building. Alright. Drop back down and shrug. <laughs> Keep walking around, I guess. Walk around the right. outside of it. As you uh, you see that the, the shell of the warehouse is far bigger than the um the thing than the, the, the box. Um, and the box doesn't seem to be much larger, um, than what you explored. Um, and so your guess is probably that those kobolds were, um, inside one of the two, the two rooms linked to, uh, your area and the bugbear just somehow is signaled to open and close the doors. Hmm. All right. Well, that's cool. Can I do a perception check to see if I see spot anything around there? Uh, okay. Uh, natural 20. Alright. You, um, and you're, you're investigating what now? Just kinda like, I'm looking for a way out of here or something that oh, we can use. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't sure if you were looking at something specific. No. Um, yeah, no, at the far end you see a, uh, a door that goes out. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a big Double double doors and then a smaller like door. So like, you know the the exit the warehouse big door exit and then a small door when you don't need to use that. Well, let's head towards that, I guess. Yeah, and uh, you you get there and uh, you 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 arrive at the door and there's nothing stopping you anywhere. What's up? Okay, I like that. Cool. Uh, out we go. Yeah. Do you, do you, so you you try the door. Oh yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. yeah. She, she does. Okay. <laughs> it does. It's a good, it's a good, a good, a good quickness to add to that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lex or Calista, as you grab the handle of the door, <laughs> you hear a small sound, and you feel something sting into your hand. Oh God! Not again. <laughs> I'm so glad I decided not to open the door. <laughs> now, uh, you need to make a uh, constitution saving throw. <laughs> Alright. Oh, shit. That's a seven. <laughs> that is insufficient. 
<laughs> Fear as much. Uh, don't list the ghost again. <laughs> All right. From the initial thing, you take. <laughs> you take six damage. Okay. And you are poisoned. Okay. Poison in fifth edition just gives you a disadvantage on like everything. Okay. It's not a loss of health over time. Well, that's lucky. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so I'll. Uh, th- th- was the door locked, or did she find that out or not? Well, well, pretty much as soon as she like squeezed the handle, uh, a needle flipped into her hand. All right. I'll. Uh, I'll kick it. Like, is it a, is it is it like a grabbing handle or is it like one of those push ones like you see in a like could I just like kick the handle and it would like open or is it one I have to reach out and grab with my hand and like, click the lever? Just like a doorknob. Okay. Uh, I'll check it out first if I can. Yeah. Perception. Uh, that is a uh, twelve. Okay. You uh just managed to see. A, um, a small glass, um, rod at the, uh, the handle. Oh, great. Uh, can I just, like, bust it with my rapier? Like, you can certainly try. I will try. Okay. When you hit it with your rapier, um, you hear the glass break. And you hear more like cracking of glass as if it's kind of sending a shiver and you hear it go like through the door and around the edge of the door. And then a sheet of, um, liquid falls from the threshold down across the door. Uh, make a dexterity save. Oh gosh. Uh, that's a 14? Yeah. You get out of the way in time with your rapier. As the acid begins to chew away at the door and the oh, handle. No. Acid, no. Am I supposed to scream right now? Because you, you have no reason to scream. That's You've right. never been in acid. I've never been in acid. I'm oh, good. I just kind of grin and kind of act like that's what I meant to do all along. <laughs> right, of course. I'm just sitting here looking queasy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she, she is now green. <laughs> or, or a nice shade of taupe. Well then, I guess once the door kind of acids away and once it seems a little safe, kind of leap over the burning part and outside if we can. How long do you think that'll take? I don't know. Well, it, it's pretty quick. It stops bubbling and... uh the, the pieces of the handle are no longer uh, slowing away, you know. All right. Well, follow uh, the bar through, uh, uh, through the door, I guess. All right. You uh, can't tell you're reaching for the doorknob again? Uh, if it's melted away, I'll just kick it open. If I have to open the well, door... It's, 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 it's bubbled and moved and whatnot, but it's not completely gone. All right. If it seems like the acid is... Uh, Abated. It yeah, I'll, I'll open the door. Okay, the third trap goes now. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you uh, exit out into the cool night air of Neverwinter. Oh, thank goodness. I throw up. And then a man comes around the corner and says, Hey, would you like to buy some trinkets? <laughs> That's right. <funny. Yeah. laughs> and it's funny that you should say that, because near the door... You will roll a perception check. Uh, yeah. 12. <laughs> right. To near the side, you see a, um, there's like a big crate sitting, uh, sitting against the side of the warehouse, and slumped against the crate is a fairly familiar man, and although you only saw him for a brief moment, you recognize his, his coat. He is, like, kind of slumped against the, uh, the crate. Slump day. Take out my rapier and I move up to him and I give him a little poke. He does not react. Oh, that's not good. Um, uh, I guess let's let's search him. 
I think you, I think we should be sure. Make sure. Stab him. Just stab well, him. Okay, I stab him in the leg all the way through. Uh, your rapier pierces his leg oh, until you have encountered enough resistance with your. Oh, I curious. So it's steady push. Just want to be sure, you yeah. know. All right, let's uh check him out and see uh see what he's got on him. And another trap springs. <laughs> yes, I was thinking about it. Exploding. As you open his coat, acid sprays out. He's thinking about it. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. As you open his coat, you uh, find a uh, a small uh, metal box with uh, what appear to be gems on it. The same metal box he used to, you know, track your attention before. Open it. <laughs> Let's uh, point it away from us and open it that way. So it's like pointing out into the uh, alleyway. All right, I can get behind that. Like literally behind okay. it. Okay. Yeah. As, as you open it, uh, a little bit of um, dust or something falls out of it. And you give it a little bit of shake and a little bit more falls out. And then you look at it and it appears to be a little bit of tobacco or pipe weed or whatever the fuck they smoke in Forgotten Realms. What? That's not what I was expecting. But, uh, alright. Uh, does this guy look familiar at all, or? He's right. just the guy who, uh, okay. grabbed you in the, the alley. Besides or, the, outside uh, the... besides the, you know, my, my sword wound in his leg, does it look like he's been stabbed or throat cut or? Uh, you do not see any sort of wound on the parts of him you can see. Uh, okay. Um, no blood anywhere? No. I'd, I'd like to my, I'd like to try and make an arcana check if that's possible to see if it's like maybe magic or something. Uh, yeah. Sweet. There you go. Uh, that's a nine. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Like, nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> that sounded really sound <laughs> Um, you think that it's, it's highly possible he could have been killed by magic? Um, some sort of magic perhaps that did not cause, um, ex- I mean, obviously not burning hands or some shit, but, but um, you know, it could have been magic that, that, that killed him easily, but, um, you, uh, you have a feeling that he was probably killed just by something that did not. Uh, you do not sense any residual magic on him, but you also note that it's probably well past midnight, which means that at least, like, whatever, what? 16 Did... hours have passed since right. he went to the police station. Anything that might have killed him magic-wise would have dissipated by now. Possibly. You also didn't really roll high enough to be like, this was a, you know, this spell, but yeah. No, right. Well, I mean, if it had been magic, like, you wouldn't have rolled enough. All right. It would have been at least like 10. I say we loot the, loot the body, uh, burn the building, and go home. (laughs) Oh, wait, what? (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah, I guess we already took, we already took the box from him, so he's got nothing else. Can, uh, get the hell out of here. What about burning the building? Well, I mean, why don't we just let the guards deal with that shit? Fine. Alright. I realized I had bardic inspiration I could have used. Oh well. You didn't uh, really not. No. I mean, you almost died. I'll go look for someone to cure me from this poison. <laughs> it'll be fine. Says the guy who wasn't poisoned. Yeah, it'll be fine. I mean, you don't feel like, you're not getting worse, and you don't feel like feverish or anything, you're just a little bit, like, woozy. A little fast? Yeah, you're fine. Uh, I guess you wouldn't necessarily know this, but yeah, it, it only lasts an hour. Oh, okay, cool. Well, then, let's get some nice rest. That was a standard needle trap, except I lowered the DC and the, uh, the damage, because the damage I rolled was 14. And the average damage was 11 or 12. Yeah, that so, would have killed me easily. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> the kid is just dragging a tiefling corpse. <laughs> Don't worry, buddy. You'll be the best addition to my uh, improv group ever. <laughs> this is going to be the best improv season yet. <laughs> well, I kind of want to end it on that note of that joke, okay. but that since that didn't actually happen. Um, no, so you, where are you going? Um, police or? It's midnight, so there probably isn't going to be any police really available. So. I mean, there's going to always be city watch, which is what I'm talking about when I say yeah. police station. I'll, I'll get, I'll just let the city watch know that there's a freaking madhouse with a bunch of psychopaths trying to murder people in some death trap down in the warehouse, and there's a dead dude outside of it. I'm definitely going back to the, to my apartment thing and rest. I've had a bad day. <laughs> Did not expect this when I woke up this morning. Well, yeah. yesterday morning. Alright. I, I did promise Lex that it would just be like a tea party. <laughs> um, I would say that's pretty much all I had prepared, but I didn't have anything prepared, so... Yeah, I was going to say. This... I think this was a good, uh, good run. You can end yeah, it here. A good little, uh, test run. I was trying to see if I could add anything more, but, uh, well, probably, that's probably it. For now. For now. Alright, cool. Sounds good. So I think when we start up on the actual 13th, we'll do the whole thing where we go around and introduce our, our characters and whatever. <laughs> We should do that now, though, for this. Yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, I played Canto <laughs> the Bard. Oh, um, you were serious? <laughs> no, I'm not, but... Uh, <laughs> I thought it, the, actual, I, the actual game, we will do that. I mean, uh, since this is, would be the end of the recording, I think it would be <laughs> obvious by now. And if it wasn't, then I think us saying it wouldn't help them. Well, even I didn't remember your damn name. <laughs> you said it like yeah, that. That's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was cool. I'm glad we got to do that and kind of get some spider webs out and figure some stuff out. Oh. It does have it does have me worried a bit though because we seem very squishy. Oh yeah, that's what. Yeah. Uh, neither of you is a tank. Right. Oh, I think both pretty well. I with a little bit of magic, and I mean, you destroyed those kobolds. That I did, but then they were only kobolds, so. Y yeah. But the bugbear is, you know, one bugbear for four level one adventurers. That does make me feel better. I really wish that kind of attack would have landed, because that would have been so rad. <laughs> yeah. attack with one, so. The dissonant whispers, that would have been a great one. Oh, yeah, it's that like, would have helped a lot. He runs in, roar, and it's like, ah, uh, go away. And he just runs back in the room. <laughs> Yeah, in retrospect, I probably should have used a, a, a bugbear, but that's all right. Did you actually um, make the bugbear easier? I didn't give him a shield, so I took two off of his uh, his AC, but it didn't matter. L literally anything that I changed for him did not matter. Was the experience based on monsters in 5th edition or by adventures? Uh, it's based on monsters and, you know, encounters, but... Uh, in the, what's it called, um, adventure we're going to run, there's a certain place where you should get level 2, and if you don't have level 2 yet, you'll just you just get it. Okay. Um, or, that, I mean, that's their suggestion. But um, okay. So is this canon? Does this count? This is canon story-wise, but you're not getting any XP for it. Uh, by the way, uh, I did have one more level 1 spell I could use. Ma Magic Missile? No, uh, very fire. That's right. Well, it says I have two spell slots. So does that mean I could have used Dissonant Whispers twice, or... Yes. Take... It does? Or do I have to have you it? Have... Okay, so you don't assign the slots until you cast them. So I can so... just use Dissonant Whispers over and over again until I run out of slots. Yes. Uh... Um, does... So, how many... How many level one spells do you have total? I have four spells known. 
And then I have two spell slots. Okay. So, you know Dissonant Whispers. Yep. Fairy Fire. Fire. And then Cure Wounds, I believe. Uh, no, Healing Word. Healing Word. And Sleep. I forgot you have Healing Word. And Sleep. Those are the four level one spells you know? Yeah, and then the two I have in the slots are Dissonant Whispers and Fairy Fire. Is that how okay. it works? So, you, you, the number of slots is the number of spells you have prepared for the day. Okay. As well as slots, okay? Okay. So you have Fairy Fire and um, Dissonant Whispers prepared for the day, and you yeah. can change those after a rest. Okay. But you okay. can cast Dissonant Whispers with all your slots, or you can cast one of each, or you can cast only Fairy, Fairy Fire. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. That makes me a little more so, damage dealing, too, if I want to be. S- slot number and prepared spell number is the same, but you don't assign them until you cast. So, next level, I learn another spell, and I get another spell slot. So that's nice. Um, what does it say for spells known? Is it five? So, for two, yeah, it'll be five and three. So five is known, one, three and one. And then I learned the Song of uh, Rest and Jack of All Trades. So lots of cool stuff. Let's see. Let's see if you get, uh... Well, that's right. It gives me a half proficiency on all skills I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So all of your stuff will be plus one or plus two. Yeah. Um... Okay, so at level two, you will. What is this D six after inspiration? Oh, just that's how much I add to your roll. It is a D six. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, pretty cool. You can cast all things as a uh, ritual if you want to. Hmm. Okay, so. Very specifically, the bard regains all expended spell slots at the end of a long rest. Okay. Very specifically stated. So I'm going to go home. I'm going to write up a quick song about what happened and my awesome deeds and what I did. And then (laughs) go to sleep. You are also allowed to, uh, when you gain a level, you can replace... Uh, a bard spell. Yeah. With another bard spell if you want to. Yeah, I saw that. Um, oh, wow. The Song of Rest is pretty bitchin'. Yeah, it's nice. That was pretty good. Wow. Okay. Alright. Well, that was, that was good. Yeah. This one. I'm glad you guys could play. I'm glad you guys could play for a while. I didn't know yeah. when that was going to end. Yeah, it worked out pretty well. So, we'll, uh, Look forward to doing it again on the 13th. Yeah, me too. Four to four. (laughs) To see what I can convince you guys to do. (laughs) Okay. Hey guys, I'm (laughs) free. The next time it would be, I would prefer it if I knew it a bit beforehand. (laughs) Yeah, no, this was more just a, hey, it's Saturday night, you guys feel like playing? Yeah. But. I could still work while I was playing for the most part, so it was all good. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, All right. I will catch you guys later. Yeah. All right, man. Catch you later. Have a good night. You too. You too.